If you just did the big chop or you've just finally decided to start growing your hair out but you feel like it's not growing fast enough, you may be making one or more of these major mistakes. So I'm going to show you what the mistakes are and how to fix them so that you can maximize your hair growth. And yes, this is a wig. My hair is in braids currently. Let's get into it. The first mistake is one of the most common ones because it is very exciting when you want to finally start growing your hair and this is buying and using too many products. Having too many products can be very overwhelming and it will make you much more less likely to actually use them because there's so many options. If you get the basics and stick to those at least for a start, it'll be so easy for you to add in new products in the future. But if you have too many, it's kind of like when you have so much homework and you're so overwhelmed so you just decide to do nothing. And then you miss out on so many amazing benefits because you just have too much to choose from. So my best advice is whatever products you decide to use, only get one of each for a start. It is very exciting to say, I'm gonna get like three different shampoos, I'm gonna get four different types of deep conditioners, and then two conditioners, three different kinds of moisturizers, and then like four different types of oils. Just get one of each and then see how it goes from there. The next beginner hair growth mistake that could be stunting your hair growth is not having a routine. Having a routine is similar to what I was saying about not being overwhelmed. If you have a routine, it is so easy for you to just do whatever you have to do without thinking about it. So set a specific routine. Even if you're new to it, just set a very simple routine and then stick to it. This is what's going to make you have the most progress because you will be the most consistent when you have a routine. It's also going to help you take the guesswork out of your wash day and also reduce stress when it comes to thinking about what to use, when to use it, how often to use it because it'll be in your routine and it will just basically become automatic every time you do your hair. It's also very easy to add in new products into your routine because you already have a routine. So let's say you have a shampoo, a deep conditioner, a moisturizer, and a hair oil. But let's say there's this new thing on the market and you're like, oh, a hair serum. I've never tried a serum for the scalp you'll know exactly where to fit it in. You'll be like, okay, so it's supposed to be used after I wash my hair. So I'm just inserting it in one part of my routine. This either goes before or after my moisturizer. So it will be very easy to just slot in a new product. But if you've got 20 different products to choose from and now you wanna try one more, you won't even know where to fit it in your, in your routine because you just do random things all the time. The next mistake always comes from peer pressure and this is using only natural ingredients. The reason why I don't recommend this is because there is no such thing as a natural ingredient. You know why? Because every single thing is chemicals. That's why you see water, sometimes you see H2O, you see aqua. Every single thing, including you as a person, is a chemical compound. So there's no such thing as a natural product, okay? It's just that some things are synthetically manufactured while other things are just taken directly as they are without any alterations. But here's the thing. Sometimes using chemicals or products going through a chemical process actually helps them work much more effectively. For example, egg masks are very popular. However, you are barely getting any protein benefits from the eggs. You know why? It's because the particles and the molecules of the egg protein are just too big to actually absorb into your hair shaft. So they just kind of sit on top and maybe tiny traces manage to penetrate your hair. But if you actually have hydrolyzed egg protein, which has been, of course, manufactured in a lab, they will take the egg protein from the eggs, then they will hydrolyze it so that it's easily absorbed into your hair and you will get so much more benefits. So do not be afraid. If it's a personal choice, and let's say you are vegan and completely chemical free and nothing you use is like manufactured in a lab, you make everything, by all means, go ahead and do that. But if you're just looking for a way to grow your hair, there's no evidence that will show using a natural conditioner made out of mashed avocado and honey is going to work and help you grow your hair more effectively than let's say my favorite Amica deep conditioner, which is extremely hydrating and nourishing for the hair. The main thing you need to look out for is make sure that you're buying exactly what you think you are. So for example, you might find a bottle that says 100% pure coconut oil or avocado oil but then when you read the back on the ingredients you find that the first ingredient is like mineral oil and then canola oil and then coconut oil as the last ingredient then you're not necessarily getting what you're paying for because the label says something else so if you want something that's like 
Maybe you want to add an essential oil to your routine and you want rosemary oil. Look to the back so that it says 100% organic rosemary oil or 100% rosemary oil, unrefined. That's where you're looking for that. But if you're looking at something else like a moisturizer, you may find other chemicals in there, but just make sure that what you're looking for is actually in it. Most moisturizers and deep conditioners will have the first ingredient as water or aqua. That's because it is a universal solvent and it helps any product absorb better into your hair. So there's no problem with that. It's very rare that you find a first ingredient as something else. A popular brand that has something else as the first ingredient is Maui Moisture and the first ingredient in their products is usually aloe vera. But also if you look at an aloe vera plant and you break down the ingredients of an aloe vera plant, it's still like a very maybe 80% water. So in that, 100% natural ingredients are not all good and 100% chemical ingredients are also not all good. You just need to find what works for you. Remember things like poison ivy and other poisonous substances are 100% natural from the earth and they can kill you, okay? So it doesn't mean it's a great thing. Even things that sound good, for example, pollen. There's lots of things that are like, contains bee pollen, great. I'm allergic to pollen, so it actually won't be great for me. 100% coconut oil, great. Adds hydration, adds a little bit of protein. My hair hates it. However, my hair loves rosemary oil. It loves 100% natural avocado oil. It also loves Olaplex. So just pick and choose whatever works great for your hair and then stick to it. The next big mistake you may be making is constantly jumping on the bandwagon of new things and then not giving enough time for the products that you do have to actually work or noticing that a product doesn't work for you but still using it anyway because it's popular. Now notice that my channel is a hair growth channel so it is my job to constantly try out new things and share them with you in the hopes that you may find at least one thing that you like and stick to it. For example, I've tried multiple different types of hair growth oils and right now I have like my one perfect holy grail. When I'm not testing something out, I will go back and use that. So let's take a look at some of the biggest trends we've had on YouTube, right? So rice water has been a huge trend. Then we had onion juice and then we had the Cardi B mask, which we all know a lot of people have been doing that mask for years, but a lot of people were calling it the Cardi B mask because she showed herself using it. Then there was rosemary oil. Then there's the egg mask. There's aloe vera. There's so many different things. Right now what's really trending is clove oil and I actually made a video on clove oil as well. Now here's the thing. All of those things are all amazing. Some of them have very similar benefits. Some of them have different benefits. You can't have more than one thing that does almost the same thing. And so you don't have to use both. For example, if you find that your hair hates rosemary oil, but it loves tea tree oil, there are many similar benefits. So you can just choose one or the other. You don't have to use both. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people use something for like two weeks. You've used that peppermint oil and you're like, wow, it's feeling amazing on my scalp, it's tingling. And then someone makes a video one month later saying, listen, this is the best thing that's ever happened, okay? Clove oil is better than rosemary oil. It's better than peppermint oil. It's better than anything you've ever tried. Use this instead. Then you're like, you know what? I'm convinced. I'm gonna use the clove oil. Then you use the clove oil. And two weeks later, someone's like, you know what? I figured out how to make an oil out of rice water. This is gonna be better than anything you've ever tried. Now look, when you want to sell something, of course you have to make it sound attractive. And the more you think it works, the more likely you are to be consistent and use it. But there's always the next best thing, especially with the internet and TikTok. New things are created every single day. So I'm not saying don't try these new things. I'm just saying when you try it, allow it enough time to work before you move on to the next thing. So let's say rosemary oil. I have been using rosemary oil for over a year now and I know that it works well. So if I want to try something new, I can already tell and compare it to rosemary oil and be like, you know what? This isn't working as well as my rosemary oil, so I'm gonna go back to it. Or actually, this is working better, or I like something different about it, so is there a way I can combine them and use them together? But here's the thing, you need to give things six weeks to at least three months to even see if it's doing anything. If you're using something for two weeks and then it doesn't work and then you use something else for two weeks, look, Hair doesn't grow overnight. Hair doesn't grow in two weeks. There's no such thing, there's no such miracle or else 
there would be some rich person out there who's making our hair grow like weeds. We would all have hair down our backs. But there are things that can actually really boost your hair growth and just at least get your hair to grow to its utmost potential. But if you don't give those things enough time to work, you will never find anything that works because you're constantly jumping on to the next thing which eventually will not work. And now speaking of things that don't work, if you jump onto a trend and it doesn't work and it doesn't work for you and you can immediately tell like what I said about coconut oil, if I put coconut oil on my hair, immediately it starts to feel hard and brittle. There's no need for me to say I'm going to wait for 3 months to see if this is going to make a change. No, you have seen instantly that it's worked badly. So it, let's say you use peppermint oil and while it's great, maybe you find out that you're allergic to it. Don't say well, I must find a way to make it work because even though I'm allergic to it, Angelica said it really makes her hair grow so much faster so I have to use it. No, no, no. Maybe you can say what works as close as possible to peppermint oil. Mm, rosemary oil. Maybe I won't be allergic to that. Let me try that. And then you can wait and see if it's going to help you. The next major mistake you might be making that's really stunting your hair growth and making your hair not grow as fast as you want it to is not getting enough trims. And it's not because your hair grows from the ends. That is impossible. Your hair grows from the roots. It's just that when your hair is split and damaged, the splits continue going up. So even if your hair is growing, you're more likely to get more breakage, more splits, and more thin ends. And you have to continue cutting and cutting and cutting when you could have just got rid of the split ends at once. If you don't get enough trims, it will really stunt your hair growth because it's stunting the retention of the hair growth, not the actual hair growth. I would suggest you get trims anywhere from six weeks to three months. And the reason why the gap is so huge, that's because it depends on what you do with your hair. If you're very violent with your ends, if you heat style your hair a lot, depending on what you do, you may get split ends really fast or your split ends may not come as fast, but getting rid of as much of them as possible as soon as you can is the best idea. Also, do not cut split ends if you don't have them. Because some stylists would say, I recommend you trim your hair every six to eight weeks. If you have split ends every six to eight weeks, you will need to trim them every six to eight weeks. But if it's been eight weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks, and you still don't have any split ends, there's nothing to cut, so just don't cut, okay? When you have the split ends or damaged ends, then cut them. I actually have a whole video all about trims, and if you want to check that out, you can check it out right here. Also, hit the subscribe button on my face right there if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, and follow me on Instagram for my makeup deets if you are interested. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!